Sakharport in Ras Al Khaimah is about to embark on a project to build one of the world's deepest key walls in a totally exposed location with no protection from the open sea. The project will enable the acceptance of the world's biggest ships. However, it also means pushing the limits of design engineering in this field of maritime expertise beyond anything that has been attempted before. The addition of two new berths capable of accepting cape-sized vessels would increase the annual capacity of Sakhar port from over 70 million tons to comfortably in excess of 100 million tons. A project to build two new cape-sized berths would require the construction of a new 700 meter long key wall, the dredging of an approach channel, vessel turning circle and berth area seaward of the existing southern breakwater to a depth of 18 meters, and the creation of a reclamation platform between the new key wall and existing breakwater structures. A project of this scale would require the dredging of approximately 1.3 million cubic meters of material from the seabed, much of which would be utilized in creating the 85,000 square meter land reclamation platform. At its highest point, including the upper section that will sit above the water surface, the new key wall will reach in excess of 26 meters, making it one of the tallest and deepest key wall structures in the world. The first phase of the project is the excavation of the seabed to create a foundation trench. A length of the new key wall foundation trench will be excavated, along with a portion of the vessel turning circle, which requires the dredging of approximately 200,000 cubic meters of material from the sea floor. This will increase the eventual depth from 12.2 to 20.2 meters. Part of this phase involves the excavation of an even deeper trench to enable the laying of the foundation blocks for the base of the new key wall. The first key wall block is placed on August 1st, 2017. Construction of the key wall will continue for several months, with over 5,000 blocks of an average weight of approximately 80 tons. Rapid and accurate laying of the key wall blocks, which is tightly aligned with the process of dredging and land reclamation, creates significant efficiencies for the project. The creation of the reclamation platform 130 meters wide between the new key wall and existing breakwater, providing 85,000 square meters of land, requires the placing of approximately 1 million cubic meters of material, which will be dredged from the seabed. The sheer volume of material that the dredging operation will displace means that the team make the decision to scale up the operation by utilizing one of the world's largest cutter suction dredges, the Athena. The Athena positions itself by using its large spud poles at the bow of the vessel and anchor poles at port and starboard sides. This enables it to dredge wide sections of seabed in a semicircular arc. By tailoring the key wall construction methodology and optimizing project resources, the project has moved slightly ahead of its scheduled timeline upon reaching the next key phase, which is the construction of the final upper layer of the key wall, known as the capping beam. However, before the capping beam is laid, a process known as preloading must take place. The purpose of preloading is to eliminate residual settlement, ensuring that the foundation of the key wall settles before the capping beam is laid, and to avoid any remaining settlement taking place when works are finally completed. Upon successful completion of preloading, the construction of the capping beam can start. Instead of casting the required blocks landside and lifting them into position, the capping beam is cast in situ on top of the precast mass concrete key wall, with the beam being reinforced with a network of steel bars. Using this method of casting requires a high degree of precision. For this, a purpose-built formwork, known as the Traveller, was fabricated to support the works. By the time the final series of dredging campaigns have been completed, approximately 1.4 million cubic meters of material has been dredged from the sea bed with 1 million cubic meters of this material being used to complete the land reclamation. Concurrently, the construction of the capping beam has been finalized and work has taken place to ensure that the capping beam and reclaimed land are aligned. The completion of the land reclamation and capping beam means that the project can proceed to the next and final major stage, the landside works. The landside works stage comprises of the integration and installation of essential berth infrastructure to facilitate what will ultimately be a large-scale commercial venture, operating 24-7. A variety of different systems such as power supplies, potable water pipes, berth lighting, telecommunications connections, pipelines and environmental protection equipment are all required to make sure that the berths will be fully capable of berthing, loading and facilitating the disembarkation of the world's largest cargo vessels. 
Concurrent to the landslide works, the process to tie in with the key revetments at the north end of the berth can be completed, together with the placing of the remaining 15-ton concrete armour units. In total, approximately 1,100 of the strategically positioned armour units are required to protect the revetments, providing an additional barrier to further future-proof the entire structure. The on-schedule completion of these last stages means that the finishing line for the overall conclusion and handover of the project is now in sight. On the evening of October 10, preparations begin for a notable event. The arrival of the first vessel at the newly constructed berth. This is the first time the new key wall, with its supporting infrastructure and apparatus, has been tested in full operational mode with a real commercial vessel. The berthing of the vessel proceeds perfectly. Every aspect of the operation has gone to plan and the new key wall can now be considered fully operational for commercial business. The successful completion of this massive project, resulting in the opening of two new deep water berths capable of handling cape-sized vessels, consolidates Sakhar port's position as one of the leading bulk handling ports in the entire Middle East region, and positions its home emirate of Ras al-Khaimah as one of the leading global hubs for the industrial and construction fields.